about the state of our nation. Kihara Member of Parliament, Didi Nyoro is in the house, as is Igembe North, Member of Parliament, Maoka Maore. We're talking about the future of this nation. And gentlemen, a moment ago, we are talking about, look, moving forward. Uh, you talked about 15 million in the hustler nation, mm. right? Yeah. You talk about a shift in the mountain. Yeah. And yet when you look at voter registration the last three weeks, and this could be an indicator or not, we don't know, it's very low. Yeah. Especially for a target audience or constituency that you want to grab, you being UDA. Why, how do you, how do you explain the low voter turnout? Uh, the first thing is the apathy, that is especially with the youth, because they are dejected. The economic policies of this regime have not been favorable to the youth of Kenya. The standard, the standard of life in Kenya has dwindled, and definitely now people feel left out from the policies of the government and the decisions the government is taking. Unemployment rate in Kenya is just around 40%. Actually, we are among the top 20 in terms of unemployment rate in the world. And therefore, with that kind of a population, uh, Jeff, you have to understand that there is a lot of voter apathy across and especially young people. The president on uh, in, Madara, in uh, Masujadi talked about C uh, CRB. What he, does, he didn't tell the Kenyan people is that the CRB he referred to, 14 million Kenyans are listed there. They are listed there because they have been victims of predatory borrowing, and especially that is based in, on fintech. Most of them, because there is no space in the mainstream financial sector, have fallen prey to other uh, predatory leaders. And therefore, that kind of dejection has generated the apathy that we are seeing across the entire country. And on the same, Jeff, because I'm talking the, about the economic policies, I, I wonder whether we actually have policymakers who look at the books of, our, of, of this current regime. And there is something that I keep referring to. I refer to it because when we talk about voter apathy, we are talking about the youth. These are people who have been indebted by this regime. These are people who are going to pay debts that they actually never enjoyed. And just give me a minute to just demonstrate. And so that you see where actually apathy is coming from. Uh, Jeff, the kind of debt that re this regime has taken from 1.8 trillion they got from President Kebaki in 2012. Now we have ballooned that. If you add the debt that is a GOK direct and debt that is a, a guaranteed by GOK to other SOEs, it goes to in excess of 12 trillion Kenya shillings. I want to show you something so that you see why the Kenyan people are very angry and especially the youth are very angry. It therefore means this country has borrowed a net of in excess net, close to 10 trillion Kenya shillings. That is net borrowing. I want to show you what that kind of money can do so that you see why the Kenyan people are angry and dissatisfied with, 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 with this regime. If you can take a, a pen and paper, Jeff, on this idea of the president talked about. Mashima, you too, you can take a pen. No, no, I think the president. Part of trillion can guarantee by which government? Uh, I thought parliament put a ceiling. Jeff, okay, give me the math. <laughs> The president talked about the tarmac roads that have been done by this regime for the na last nine years to just around 7,700 kilometers. Mm -hmm. If you times that by two, it comes to 15,000. Yeah. I am just trying to, 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 to show the Kenyan people the kind of money this regime have borrowed and whether we can actually clearly see where this money is. If we actually did double those roads, that is instead of 7,700, we actually do 15,000. If you times that by 60 million per kilometer, of road, which is AC, not actually low volume, that this government is investing in, if you do the math, it comes to around 1 billion Kenya shillings. 900. Because that's around 900 uh, billion Kenya shillings. Yeah. We have 12 million households in Kenya. The households that had electricity prior to 2012 were just around 2 million. And therefore, we had 10 million more, according to the data by Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Okay. The cost of connecting a person or a household to the national grid is 35,000 before you subsidize. If you times that, Jeff, you'll do the math. Uh, it, maybe it's around... Um, 12 million times 10 million. No, it can't be 10 million. We are talking about 10 million households times 35,000. Okay. That is 350 billion. billion yeah. I want to, to demonstrate to you. 
If we say around the same, each constituency in Kenya, we have invested a two billion water project, meaning we have supplied clean water to majority of the households in Kenya. We talk about two billion per constituency, that's around 580 billion Kenya shillings. Yeah. We go to other tajibos that we should actually do with debt. Let's assume we build a one billion stadium in every constituency. That's around 290 billion per constituency. Let's assume we build a TVET to a level of a university at one billion per constituency. That's around 290 billion. If you had investment in our education in terms of infrastructure, and we assume every constituency got one billion, in that period of time, that's another two, 290 billion. If you add all that month and try to imagine any other thing, developmental, that we, can, we ought to have done with the borrowed money, that money comes to around 3 billion Kenya shillings, Jeff, or just there about. 3 trillion. 3 trillion. Not B. Sorry, 3 trillion Kenya shillings. I've just told you the regime of President Uru Kenyatta has borrowed a net of 10 trillion. And therefore, I want to say this. The reason why majority of the Kenyan people are angry is because we have overborrowed, but unfortunately most, most of the money that we have overborrowed has not come to this economy. Most of it is hidden out there. No, I think most no, of it think, has gone to our you, leaders. I, I think you are getting and that the, is the kind of thing that is bringing around the no, inequality no, we, in our country, okay, where we have many dejected youth and a few cream of people associated with government who through state capture and through direct defari have actually benefited from our sweat. Okay, Malcolm. No, I, I, I think it is good when you use uh, figures. Don't bombard pe people with the figures that don't add up. When we know in this country the debt ceiling put by the national parliament, Honorable Nyoro was in parliament when we made it six trillion. We came and opened it up. Which date was that? The date reached ten trillion. In total, because for him he's saying about 12. So when those who are watching, they may think actually he's saying something substantive. But this is the incitement I was talking about. But aren't you in the same parliament? Yes, we are. We are. And there is, there is a known ceiling. In the, no, no, no. There is a known ceiling. It has not reached 9 trillion. Our response. It has not been opened by parliament. They are the ones who authorize. Okay. So it when, when it six trillion. Yes, when it came to 6 trillion, yeah. if you go to the hands and you will not meet his vote there, all of the people he is calling the majority within Jubilee objecting to it. Now, when you go and run with the, you, 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 you say you, you run with the hares and the hunt with the hounds, uh -huh. this is tanga tanga perfect. Because they will not want to tell you they are a party to it, they will blame it on somebody else. And it's a syndrome. You know, the SME, <laughs> they, they blame somebody else, uh, SBE. Mm. That is the syndrome they are suffering from. They have been in this government. They have been a part of all this borrowing. They have been a part of those projects. When it is good, they are nine. You heard the DND, Deputy President talking about very nice and glorious things they have done in nine years. He never complained like he is complaining. But Wakienda, Wakitoka Hapo, is the bad things about this government. Borrowing by this government, they have been borrowing. Authorized by parliament. Authorized by cabinet. Nobody has complained. But because the, when they go to some corners, then government and the president is different from them. When it is good for them, oh, this is a good government. We have done very well with my brother. We have done very well in the first term. We have done the roads. We have done the steamer. We have done the education. All that time is good. But when it comes now inciting the youth, telling them that you have a dynasty, and until when he went to his father's uh, uh, memorial in 2019, he said from now on, once you stop this story of dynasty, and he himself realized it was reckless. It was going to bring down the country. He, they now turned it into Nahasula versus the rest. Because when you go and tell somebody uh, that you have a car or you have a home or a better house than the other one, that this one, you have not gotten it right, uh, rightly, it belongs to somebody else. It is a very bad policy in the politics. Because if, in the, I have said again, in the unfortunate event you end up being president, when you look at those people on, your, on their face, what will you tell them? How will you achieve what you are talking about? Yes, you have shouted your way, you have conned your way into leadership. You are calling other matapeli, but this is the pure condition, con 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 conmanship. You con your way into power after you are there. Do we have a country to talk about? And that's the worry of everybody in this country. If in the unfortunate event, something happened, they confuse these youth we are talking about. And a substantial amount of them 
vote for them and they end up in power. Do we have the country called Kenya? Do we have it? Okay, Moshimua, real quick. You're, no, you're, don't just think yeah, about it. Okay. I, I get your point. Do we have a country to talk about? You are an economist. In the first place. Yes, Jeff. We talked about a six trillion shilling budget <laughs> yeah. before, right? Yeah. yeah. And then it was opened up and it, it reached nine trillion at some point. Yeah, Jeff. Am I correct here? Je Jeff, I, I thought one of the qualifications of being called to this kind of show is that you'll be able to give the Kenyan people facts. And especially when you hold a leadership position in the parliament of Kenya. If Moshimua Maoka Maore listened to me when I was tabulating that data. I talked about direct debt to GOK at around 8 trillion. You, doesn't, you don't need to go far, Jeff. You just need to go to the uh, Central Bank of Kenya website. You'll see that the direct debt that the government of Kenya owes, that is domestic and external uh, debtors, is around 8 trillion. What Mwesimua Maoka Maore doesn't know is that there is other debts guaranteed by the government of Kenya to something called SOEs, state-owned enterprises. I want to give an example. Kenya Power has been indebted because 51% of Kenya Power, or majority of shares in Kenya Power, are owned by government. Um, Kenya Power has taken up loans in excess of 100 billion. That money is guaranteed by Kenya Power. If Kenya Power doesn't pay that debt, that debt is accrued, goes to uh, uh, direct the government of Kenya. Majority of the water companies in Kenya, many of them, from Madhi Water, even going down to other smaller companies that is um, uh, uh, the, the last mile uh, uh, companies in terms of, of the ones that connect water to the homes. Most of them are indebted. That debt is usually guaranteed by the government of Kenya. That debt currently is around 3.8 trillion Kenya shillings. If you add 8 trillion plus 3.8, it comes to 11.8 trillion, which is just around 12 trillion that I worked with. By the way, Jeff, in my, in my mathematics, you can actually add the SGR. At 350 billion. And we must not run away from facts. Maoka Mahore cannot come here and claim that we are bombarding the Kenyan people with figures. Uh, Kenyan people are bright. Nice. They have phones in their homes. They can do the calculations. The calculations I've done, Jeff, and I want to repeat, the money, the kind of money we've borrowed, just a third of that money ought to have tarmacked double the number of roads we've tarmacked. Every Kenyan home ought to have electricity. Every Kenyan home ought to have drink, uh, clean drinking water that is tapped and the other tabulations that I gave. He also talked about, I mean, uh, talking with both ends of the mouth. In terms of borrowing, we have been in government, and all the other rhetoric that is becoming banal with time. If you go to the same data, President Uhuru Kenyatta got this government when our debt external and in, uh, domestic was 1.8 trillion. You said in that. 2017, that debt was at 4.4 trillion. And therefore, the net borrowing in the first term was just around 2.6 trillion Kenya shillings. You can clearly see that after the second term, we have actually borrowed close to triple the money we borrowed in the first term. And therefore, we need to argue with facts, Jeff. Because facts don't lie, figures don't lie. This second term of this regime has been shabolic. A lot of government money has been stolen. I have tabulated that for the Kenyan people to know that the money we can actually touch and see is less than a third than we have borrowed. Unfortunately, it is me and the majority of the Kenyan youth who are going to pay this debt for the many years to come. Just recently, you saw gov the government of Kenya signing off a Japanese loan which will be maturing in 60 years. Jeff, we are talking about the youth. You talked about the upper the, in the elections. The whole thing compounds, and our economy gets battered. It gets battered, there is no employment, and therefore the entire cycle comes down crumbling. And yet the president was quick to say the other day that he's done more in the last, since 2018. Than 70 years. Yes. He was right, and his detractors, they are going to meet in the not so far off in the future. You will find that the issues that uh, are being raised, you would think the member of parliament talking and his team, they are not in Jubilee. And uh, when the date when they left Jubilee, they are the ones who know why. And uh, how they intend to reinvent themselves, they also have an, uh, have, have an idea. So when uh, I was talking about the figures being uh, bombarded around, 
they are not worthy uh, if you pick on any one of them you'll actually waste a lot of airtime in the sense they are not worth it because if you talk about the, the trillions he's saying between 2017 and today the money borrowed it is actually not much between 2017 it is actually the interest which has accrued on the previous debts <laughs> he will not want to tell you about the interest that has accrued apart, apart from, from the euro bond which are the ceremonies of signing loans apart from the the one you, you saw the other day with imf something just to support the budgetary support it isn't there but they will use those figures and i'm telling you just purely for the value of incitement and the value of excitement now even the youth they are saying they want to incite and excite they, you can hear they are not interested in the in, in, in the vote and then they want to blame somebody else in instead of blaming themselves for creating that apathy in instead of playing uh, blaming themselves for creating a dysfunctional government because we don't because I, I i was in chuka the other day and i had some elders stand up and say we want you to pick so and so as you are running it i was with the Raila there and i just looked at them there and i really pitied him and even prayed for this country because if there's something you don't want to hear in this country again is an unfortunate relationship like what uhuru has suffered from by having a deputy who comes from day one, he's plotting how he's going to take over. You don't know, yes. sure, you don't know that they were bromance, they were friends for a long time. But Moshmua, I saw you shake your head for a moment there. <laughs> I saw you shaking your head. No, but, but it is true. You, know why I was you don't sick. want an unfortunate yeah. situation like that. Yeah. Go on. You, you know why I was sick. But, but he did, I didn't get enough time. Uh, <laughs> he no, no, got plenty no, no, of no, 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 Let me finish just my senior by, by responding that. He's your senior. <laughs> he's my senior in all respects. No, no, we even, we even respect each other. Well. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. He's falling short. And being a leader in parliament. No, 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 no. You have said that one for the that time. That, that the many. You are not amused by that leadership in the, in the first place. And the tabulations that I've given are factual. And if they are not factual, then that means that the government at which Maoka Maore is, I don't know, a whip or something, so you, 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 is, 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 no, is you therefore, see the mediocrity now. Is therefore you see the mediocrity we were talking about. Is therefore a government <laughs> of city. But he has a title. You, because yes. the figures that I've given, <laughs> yes. I have lifted them. You know, this is not magic. If you have time, you can Google. I have lifted them, lifted them from government itself. How does that serve And the cost? fact is this. How does that serve his cost? Now, can I talk or... Uh, finish, finish. <laughs> I give the tabulation of debt of this country, Jeff, because I know what majority of the leaders in Africa do. Majority of African leaders want to appease the population now for my deleo and projects that are for the future. That's number one. Number two, majority of African leaders actually borrow to steal something called development corruption. When you borrow and build a good road, you inflate the cost, people clap for you that you've done a credible job, you get no one to question you with hard figures like the ones I've given you, you run away with too much. I have tabulated that the government of Uhuru Kenyatta from 2012 or 2013 has borrowed even in excess of the limit set by parliament because actually the debt ought to have included the debt guaranteed. I've also tabulated what that money should do. I have tabulated so that we come out from the trillions and we speak to the Kenyan people that this regime has borrowed money, half of it, if they just stole half of it, they hide in safe havens. The rest they invest even but, here. But Kenyans know if, who steals government money. I finish. Mm -hmm. They know. If they just expended half of that money, we would be having the double of roads being constructed. Every household in Kenya ought to have safe drinking, clean water. Every home in Kenya ought to have electricity. Every constituency would be having a stadium. Every constituency would, act, I actually left out, a hospital worth a billion shillings. And after created real development, because you should actually not borrow for recurrence. So the money I've given is in assumption, Jeff listened to this, Listen. is in assumption that there is no develop, development money in Kenya, that we purely invest in development from the borrowed money. Those are figures. Now, the other figures that I'm giving, I'm giving. I have a quick question on that. Now, because the, no, the time is in it. What I need to him to explain, he will look at Kenyans and tell them all those tales he is saying and ask them, would you please trust us to deliver on a more civilized, on a more gentle, on a more peaceful, on a more prosperous country, apart from what we have seen in the last 50 years. You know, there, there, there are some things people just jump for the sake of it. You are blaming a government from borrowing to do development. There is no government in the world which can develop without borrowing. We 
know that. Now, when he says I'm about stealing, Kenyans, you look at them on the eyes and ask them who has been stealing your taxes. Go to the Audit and Controller General. Go to the government scandals that we have. Who has been involved in it? You know, when you, when you tell these lies, you better make sure they can be sustained. But Kenyans are not fools. They know who to trust. Okay, let the man finish his point. Go on, Moshimura. Yeah. So I was saying, Jeff, yes. that uh, the statistics that I gave even about uh, unemployment rate are there, not just in paper. We can see them on, on the ground. We know that. And we on know the that. issue of who you can trust, I have given just a snapshot of what the bottom up is all about. We are very conscious about where the, the level at which our economy is at. We are also very, very clear in our mind about where our country should go. And I want to tell you this, Jeff. Part of the reason why our economy is so battered for the longest time, I gave you the example of the reason, is because we just entrust our economy to a few people above here. Majority of the youth, majority of the Kenyan people are just us by. They are just passive uh, participants. They just sit there, they are some drivers of the economy. We want to harness every talent. We want to harness every ability of the Kenyan person, from the farmer to the hustler to the other person, so that we can take Kenya forward. Number two, you know, people keep throwing words about corruption. Can you trust this? Can you trust that? Jeff, let us be very clear to the Kenyan people. Let us, let us be honest for the first time. I have only given the data about debt. The issues I have tabulated are real hard facts. Tell me, Jeff, without blinking of an eye, from the over 10 billion Kenya shillings borrowed by this regime, more than or the big proportion of it having been borrowed in this second term, where is that money? There is no corruption that is more mega than that. And the major corruption actually, Jeff, let's be honest, because the Kenyan people know, the major corruption in this country is not here police kuchukua shirigi kwa huyu na kwa yule. What has actually struggled our economy is something, something called state capture. Majority of the policies being passed, superintended by our leadership in parliament, they are just geared towards benefiting some private ads. Oh, and I want to give you some examples. Which you're a part of, right? You know, Jeff, we are part of it. You are. But I want you to know this. In parliament, he says say they are a majority. Yeah. In parliament, we cast votes. Yes. And the majority, their way, I, I mean, uh, the, the majority have their way. Even the debt ceiling he's talk, talking about, if you go to the Hansard of the National Assembly, I am among the many people who voted against it. And therefore, let us lay the facts bare. Our country has been let down, number one, by state capture. Where we have a leadership of this country, you cannot differentiate when they are promoting private ads and public ads. And let us be honest to the Kenyan people. If you are a leader of a nation, you are elected by farmers, for example, milk farmers, and they bring a case on your table. On the other side, you, well, you, are, you are a processor of that milk. Which side are you going to favor? Number two, during President Kibaki's time, there was real money in our financial sectors. That is why our enterprise grew. That is why we had many real billionaires being created by President Kebaki. And yet, this regime, and yet you criticized him. Let me finish. Me, I never criticized Kebaki. But what this you, what, 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 this, what this regime no, the, you, you has, has been, been, been I have a question here. I need to by something about this called day. fintech. Those people, yes. 14 million, Kenya, uh, uh, 14 million uh, uh, Kenyans who are in CRB, I lose Safaricom because we own Safaricom as a public. It owns. The public, the government of Kenya owns 35% of Safaricom. When the Kenyans Fuliza and when Kenyans Emswari, is this the public I, I, I that think, benefits? I think we're having Who are these general. people we are that and actually I, benefit I, I want him from to the explain. predatory fintech in January 2018. borrowing? I'm still in the state capture. No, in, the, in January 2018. Go on. I want him to talk about his state capture in, in real figures. Eh? January 2018. Our national debt, when we were raising it uh, towards the end of about April, there to raise it to, to six trillion when we were opening it up. If you go on by now, it, has, it is yet to reach nine trillion. But what he's saying about these, these other things are outright lie. Then government or GOK debt is usually tabulated, as he said it, both domestic and foreign. 
it includes those uh, state organizations he was talking about. He knows very well. But what you need, he needs to explain to Kenyans. Between 2017, no, 2018, March 9, and to date, Kenyan government has not borrowed money worth two trillion. It has not reached there. When it reaches, they will come to parliament for us to open. But he wants to take advantage of this, uh, you know, and it's an uncensored debate. People can just... Jeff, it I, I, didn't know we, I didn't know we as leaders we can be well, that's, that ignorant. Let me finish. That, that is your problem. Last year. Maybe you no, guys so last year, let us down. It was more Maokama Ore. It is not the pettiness. It is pettiness in the sense of... You ought of, to have known no, no, that there much, were some money... No, use figures. I think, I think you can both I are my point? No, 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 visitors to Jerusalem. No, let him use figures that have dates. In between 2017 and today, how much have we borrowed? But you were asking the question, yes. who has let us down? Yes. I think it's all our leaders. We, we have, have been let down. Why can't you leave the government and, do a, a, and they say we are outsiders instead of okay, just hanging take, on there? Let's take a look at some tweets on the magic wall. <laughs> why don't we? I, I ought to have given that point, Jeff. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Let's get some feedback. Edwin says, kindly ask Didi Nyoro, what would their UDA possible route to 2022 in the possible scenario that they don't form the government? Let me give you a few issues because uh, I am very optimistic that the Hustler Nation and UDA is going actually to defeat the former Prime Minister with a bigger margin than 2017. He had around 6.7 or thereabout million votes. Our side then had around 8.2 million votes. You know, people st keep saying he's climbing the mountain to get a certain percent, ostensibly because they imagine that the votes he got are intact. Let me tell you something, Jeff. The coastal region, the, the counties of the coastal region, gave the former prime minister around 845,000 votes. That's around 84.5% in 2017. I want you to go to coast and tell me whether you see those votes now. The lower eastern, the three counties, they gave the former prime minister an 83% lead in 2017. Go there and tell me whether you see those votes. In western, uh, 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 the, the, the western uh, counties, they gave him around 80, a whooping 86% cumulatively. I want you to go to Bugoma, go to Kakamega, and all the counties of western, and tell me whether you see those votes. I, I want to tell you one thing. <laughs> Majority of our votes are intact then. And you can tell me where you see a dent. And, and you're but saying, you have made a lot no. of inroads. Are you saying first round defeat? We, not just first round. A rushing, decisive defeat. Let me tell you the problem we are facing in this country. We have a section of our politicians. You know, they usually say not even the wisest philosopher who can tell when a cockroach is pregnant. These people, already they know the people's votes that are in their pockets, how they will get them. Send where, where was the purpose of going to, to an election? Because surely what he is saying, they are in dynamics. They have been campaigning alone for four years. That is not what he is not saying. Now, when you get mobs for one year, year in, out, year in, out, you may actually think you punted them the way they always say, hey, mungu wako na sisi, mungu wako bingun. As if the mungu is not for us all. Mm. Just the same thing with the politicians. Okay, Clare Kagore is asking, ask Maore, shouldn't these MPs supporting Raila Odinga and defending the promises he is making be pushing to actualize these promises now since they are in the actual ruling wing of the government? No, this fella is not saying which promises. You say promises based on when you are elected. There is no time Raila Odinga has woken up and said he is a partner or a co-president or in Jubilee. Just look at the cabinet today. When you look at it, who, which of them is an ODM member? There is none. So when he, well, that, that kind of question is misplaced. Okay. Sir Charles says, the true test of UDA, a.k.a. Hustler Nation, is in the nomination. That and the choice of running mate will make or break DP William Ruto State House bid. Mojima, do you agree? Yes. We are abreast to that. And I can guarantee all the hustlers, uh, the hustlers of Kenya that UDA will conduct above board, fair, and credible nominations. And therefore, there is no cause of alarm. About Mojima Maoka Maore, talking about we are like counting votes in our pockets. You know, they keep doing their politics in the boardrooms. We go to the people. And as a politician, you can tell the dynamics when you're on the ground. And therefore, the projections that I'm giving are not based on Twitter and me in boardrooms here in Nairobi. I have been to those areas, and I know what I'm saying. And take this to the bank, Jeff. Call me here next year. 
we are going to defeat the former prime minister with a bigger margin than the last general elections. Hmm. Remember, the t we will replay that tape. Mutua Lloyd is saying, ask Malcolm Ore, should, or rather, Honorable Malcolm Ore, should tell Kenyans, other than the 6,000 shilling monthly survival stipend of two youths, what else are they going to do? Be specific. Well, I think what we are facing here, the time when Raila Odinga is going to be a candidate, we cannot respond to that. For now, he has actually been doing the Azimio. Are you saying he's not going to be a candidate? Come on. No, no, no. I'm saying when, when he does, when that time the manifesto will come, what we have now is the Azimio mm. about the economic prosperity of this country, about the unity of the country, about to revamp the economy specifically from the ruins of the Tangatanga of Wing in the Jubilee government. Okay, so what, what you're saying is until he announces, yes. you're not going to mention anything? Yes, for now, let us hold on. Mwalimu Madai Wilfred, I am a youth, in fact, I may not vote because this government is not working closely with youth. Let them contribute, or rather, let them continue borrowing. But the fact is, qua ground, we do need different. I just gave you the figures, Jeff. Not just government borrowing. I think you cut me short when I was talking about a very serious matter. SOE About well. fintech borrowing. That youth and many of them are in CRB. They are borrowing for Lisa at 6% per day. That is over 2,000% per annum. Tell me, Jeff, where in the world can you get that kind of uh, uh, rate? And the number two question is, it is good to borrow, that's fine. But even after we borrow, who is benefiting and who is milking Kenyans? 6% rate per day. Who are benefiting? Safaricom has an obligation, by the way. We own Safaricom as government because that 5% is owned by the taxpayers. They ought to tell the Kenyan people when they fuliza and when we try to promote this fintech borrowing, who actually benefits? Let me ask because you. I believe yeah, I think that is one tag of company. state okay. capture. Let me ask you this as an ordinary guy. Why would you borrow then? Yes. Would I force you then to borrow? Force. Does Safaricom force you to borrow? <laughs> you, you know, Jeff, we cannot afford to be simplistic. It is the role of government of the day to actually have deliberate policies of taking an economy forward. This government, because some of our leaders are benefiting, have found it safe to keep on imprisoning Kenyans into this kind of borrowing, which is not actually investment kind of borrowing, but predatory consumerism, because they are taking advantage of the many jobless Kenyans who have to Furiza every day and Mswali every day. But the critical question remains, who benefits from this borrowing? Edwin Nyakweba is saying, bottom up or trickle down or side to side or whichever model can work. The problem is not the model. The problem is the drivers of the model. That is the leaders. Are they worthy? Your guess is as good as mine. I think go to the next is better that way. So we can, we can get. <laughs> that one is it's clear. <laughs> that, but that's a good point. It's, clear. it's the leadership. It's yes. the people driving yes. this. Yes. And, and you are both part of it. No, You're no, 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 no. You've been there for 30 years. Yes. Let me tell you why I've been. When you, when you are a leader, you are supposed to be trusted by the things you say and the things you do. But when the things you say are usually different from what you've been doing or even who you are, it becomes a crisis. You have, we have a national crisis today because our leaders don't have ethics. Because the things people were saying three years ago or even last week are not the same things they are saying. They are not consistent. Some of us, we survive because we tell the truth. If I know... I will not be able to deliver on a project in my constituency. I will never hold a microphone and promise it for the purpose of getting elected. I tell you the truth, you decide. That's my policy. The problem we are facing about the leaders you have just talked about, and I ask you, when you hear, the, because I know it is going to be a two-horse race, it is not mandislinging somebody. Because I, I, I saw like the things the Didi Nyoro and his colleagues talked in Ikiamba. You have somebody describing things that are not supposed, they are actually childish in politics. They besmatch Junet for what he said, but they themselves, the things they say, you wonder, are they in a church? These people actually need prayers. They did not go to pray in a church, but beyond there they need prayers because of the, the kind of things they will say about you as a candidate or me as a candidate because I'm not with them. It is not fair. We need an ethical contest. We, if you come to Meru, 
come and say, if I become president, I will be able to help you on Mira. I will help you to, with uh, your farming. I will help you with your education. And there were things he's saying about electricity and others. Not to try to just to fight other people or insult other people, calling them Muganga. What do you mean by Muganga in politics today? Muganga is what? what? Why would you even mention that one Muganga? Supposing you accord your adjectives, where would you go? Because nobody who doesn't have adjectives. Well, the shoes on the other foot. Four years ago, <laughs> you know, your side was calling them Muganga. So yes. You know, shoes on the other. But Moshimua, <laughs> your thoughts going forward. My thoughts going forward. And keep it brief. I'll keep it brief. When President Kebaki promised free primary education, basic education, in 2002, if my recollection serves me well, Maoka Maore was in Kanu or afraid of Kanu. Majority of them said, let me use the current president. Was in let me not uh, uh, use Maoka Maore. He said that would not be possible. We have brought our agenda on the table going forward in 2022. We are very deliberate because we know economies grow invariably because of the leadership of the day. All the economies that have grown, they have not grown because they invented minerals or they got minerals in their land. South Korea, we are the same population, Jeff. We were at the same level in 1960. Currently, their GDP per capita is $30,000 per person. Here in Kenya, it's around $1,800 per person per capita. This is a country that we are in the same level. The conscious, deliberate policies of the leaders then, and especially General Park, uh, made the South Korea to be what it is today. Vietnam is another very good uh, example. It has been in ruins, you know, about the American war in Vietnam. Currently, they have overtaken Kenya. They have around double our population because of the conscious, deliberate policies of the leadership there, and especially on a policy called China Plus One. Because of their proximity to China, they are trying to sell themselves as an alternative to many other corporations that actually do manufacturing in China. Our leadership in the country from independence, uh, Jeff, going all the way, and especially to 2002, failed Kenyans. The fortunes that Kenyans made from 2002 to 2012 has been decimated by this regime, either out of will, out of state capture, or out of cruelness. But I want to tell you, Jeff, we are clear-minded. And I want to promise the Kenyan people that we have a deliberate policy on getting the Kenyan youth into jobs. We have a deliberate policy of sparring our manufacturing sector because we know economies grow on something called increasing returns and anything that encourages scale. The current economy in Kenya, and especially the agrarian one, uh, Jeff, is not uh, a modern economy because it is based on decreasing returns. We are focused. We have the energy, and we are going to deliver Kenya from the economic ruins that, have, uh, that, that uh, we have been left by this regime. All right, Moshmua, you get the last word since you're the senior, per senior most person here. <laughs> Go on. I think when, as we face a 2022 season, uh, starting now, because we are actually on the countdown, uh, people will be able to be asked uh, just a simple question. When politicians come around your village asking for your votes, it's to do what with it. Because we have seen those who came in the last election, picked our votes, and when they went there, they never responded to our needs. They just went to prepare for 2022. And that is the unfortunate thing that happened specifically in the Mount Kenya region, whereby the leaders abandoned the electorate whereby the leaders did not intend to fulfill any of the promises. They just were hanging on the whoever helped them for those elections and the nominations, thinking that uh, since so and so would never have made it, since so and so, so they are actually paying and debt. Now, in the process of paying and debt, they are very eloquent at insulting the president. And that one is a curse that is going to be fall upon them because the president never elected the leaders. It is the people who elect the leaders, so they need to put them into account. When they show up over the weekends, they should not talk about the hustlers. They should not talk about how they are sympathetic to them. They are actually con men. They con them. Because they never got, they got elected on Jubilee. They went into something else. That's what you call a con man. So I pray for this country that in August 2022, we will get the country to shift and do a kind of a referendum 
on this kind of leadership, it should never happen again in our lifetimes. Okay. Jeff, I cannot allow that to go, to, to go away. Because you cannot come here and, 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 and bastardize leaders. Uh -uh. And I want to use I my example because I'm leader. on this panel mm. as an example. Yeah. Because let us not create this perception which is now a banality. I follow and I support the deputy president. I was elected by the people of Kiharu. I'm not trying to chase them or blow my trumpet. But I want to tell Mweshimua Maoka Maori, in all my words, there are tarmac roads ongoing because of the work I do in making budgets in parliament and making sure that all Kiharu projects are there. There are water projects and irrigation projects. That is even national government. Let us come to the way we articulate and the way we expect our bursaries, uh, our CDA. Are, are you, are you Let me finish here, Jeff. It's important there? because it's not good to bastardize leaders. But it looks like you're promoting... Kiharu has got 112 public primary schools. Jeff, we agreed last time you will come in first and fact check. Out of the 112 public primary schools, all the classrooms, 97%, 97 out of every 100, we have been able to transform all Kiharu schools. They look like academies. By the way, all the 97% are tiled, mm. tiled hukuchini. And therefore, and I have not told you that we, ha I, we have built eight new secondary schools, we have built all the other issues okay. that we do around CDF. And then, therefore, I, the reason, uh, why, the reason why we support the deputy president is because we know exactly where he's leading the country next year. And because of his track record, I hope and he, I wish that be, the next time Aoka Maore no, comes, he'll, be leading it to he'll the tell dogs. us about know, it the years that the former <laughs> prime minister has been a, a MP for Kibra. And I'll tell him about the years Hasla has been MP for Eldoret North. I'll remind him about his ministerial roles in higher education and agriculture. I'm sure from there, he'll have nothing to say. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it at that for now. No, I You'll have to come back and debate. It's, it's, it's quarter to 12. We have yes, to go. Yes. We have to go. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of mathematics to bear for one evening, huh? But yeah. I wish he can put it on you. Uh, he has a very good uh, tweet thing. Let him put it there. Put it on you will get the responses and but let it balance. Thanks so much for joining us. No, folks. if it can balance, yes. then now. Uh, Every I'll Wednesday, it's all about those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other. JKL. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Good night. Good luck. I hope you learned something about numbers here tonight. God bless you, everybody. <laughs>